The final topic regarding equations have to do with formulas that are connected with word problems, with word problems themselves as well. So if we start with the formulas, we might need to rearrange those, meaning that we're going to use many of the same sorts of steps that we had used if we actually had numbers showing up rather than a bunch of letters as show up in these first two examples. The first example here, ax plus by plus c equals zero, is a formula, it's the very generic formula for the equation of a line, which we will see a little bit more in the following chapter. However, in this particular case, we're not so worried about what it means, so much as the instructions which tell us we need to rearrange things so that we will have y equals something. Well, if we need to get y equals something, then that means anything that doesn't have a y should be moved to the other side of the equal sign. So the ax part and the c part should be moved to the right-hand side of the equal sign. Well, in order to move those, we've seen in the past that that would be a situation of subtracting the ax and then also subtracting the c. That leaves me only with needing to move the B letter, which is officially connected through multiplication, and the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So the most direct answer that we can create would be to take the negative AX minus C and put that all over top of the B. One of the things that you can do if this is a bit strange looking to you is pick several different numbers for the letters that appear and work with the numbered version of your formula so that you can get a little bit better feel for how you're going to move the pieces around. Then you can replace the numbers with their original letters in order to create your final answer. Now in the case of the second example, what we have here is the formula for simple interest and, well, again, we're not worried so much about the actual use of that formula as much as the instruction which tells us that we need to solve for the letter P. This one presents a bit of an issue, though, in that the letter P shows up in two different spots. And for our answer, we would want the P to show up in only one spot at the very beginning, P equals. So we would have to think about what do we know, what in the past have we learned about that would allow us to rewrite this so that the letter P only shows up one time. Well, I can think either of combining like terms, or I can also think of factoring as a way of creating a version of this formula where the letter P shows up only one time. The factoring is the easiest way of looking at it. If I factor a P out of the right-hand side, P times 1 gives me P. P times RT gives me PRT. Now I have the letter P appearing only one time, and I need to simply move the expression in parentheses so that the P will be all by itself in order to move the expression in parentheses. Well, P times all of the junk in parentheses. The opposite of times is divide. I would need to divide on both sides by everything that shows up inside the parentheses, and that would lead me to the answer. P equals A over 1 plus RT. Now, if we actually have word problems, these are very individualized sorts of things. It's not necessarily something that we could simply say, always do this, and you will get your right answer. Which means that I have some very general sorts of suggestions for you about trying to solve word problems. And we're going to take a look at an example so that I can try to give you a little bit of an idea about what I'm getting at with these suggestions. The first suggestion is to read the problem at least twice. 
Read it through the first time so that you get a basic understanding of what's taking place. Read it through the second time so that you can get a more specific understanding of what's taking place by picking out the important sorts of numbers that are going to be needed. So if I take this example here and read it through the first time, what I'm clued in on is that I have some sort of shopping situation where I need to worry about a discount and I need to worry about tax. When I read it through the second time, I'm looking specifically for information about each of those things and thinking about what happens when I buy something that is on sale. When I buy something that is on sale, the first thing that I would have to worry about, or the first thing that the cash register would take into account, is going to be the discount. The discount here is specifically 25% off. To be a little bit more specific, that's 25% off the original price. Now, it may be important to recognize what's left over. After I take off 25% of the original price, the original price corresponds to 100%. What's left over would then be 75% of the original price. Now, if I start thinking about what's happening here in words, I have some phrasing written down that gets me started, but let's turn that into symbols so that we can eventually set up an equation. 75% would not typically appear. Instead, we would likely have a decimal version. The word of often represents multiplication. And the original price, well, if we pay attention to what we read earlier, that's exactly what we're looking for. So that is unknown. Let's pick a letter P to remind us that we are looking for a price as opposed to another letter which might not be so helpful to us. So now we have an expression that is connected to that situation about what's left over. The other issue with our purchase is that once the discount has been taken care of, then sales tax is going to be applied. So we would need to worry about the sales tax which is specifically 6%. Now we do need to be careful. 6% based on what? Is that going to be based on the original price or is that going to be based on the sale price of what's left over? And the correct answer is that this sales tax is going to be based on the sale price, what's left over, not on the original price. So, we would want to make sure that we're recognizing that. <coughs> now we can turn that into an expression. 6% as a decimal, 0 0.06. Again, the word of relating to multiplication and the sale price is what we had encountered just a moment ago when we had written in 0.75p. That was the sale price that we had figured out. Now, once those things have been taken care of, the cash register or the cashier would be ready to provide us with the total that we owe. The total that we owe is going to come from the sale price plus the sales tax. We have expressions for both of those, and we're also given in the problem 
the actual total dollar amount. So we have $33.38 equals the sale price 0.75p plus the sales tax 0.06 times 0.75p. Not very friendly looking, but if we start trying to clean things up and make that a little bit more usable, we can go ahead and multiply out so that we would have 33.38 equals 0.75p plus 0.0435p. If I recall correctly, and I'm going to double check that very quickly with my calculator to make sure that I have not made any sort of mistake. And I did. That is actually 0 0.045. No 3 in there. So now that that's actually correct, I can put those like terms together. 33.38 equals 0.795p. And in order to get the p by itself, 33.38 divided by 0.795. And remember that P is the price, so if I actually plug that into my calculator, I'll need a rounded answer, which would mean 41.99, telling me that the original price was $41.99. One of the specific types of problems that can appear as well in the homework connects to another idea worth mentioning, which is the idea of a ratio. So as an example of that, we'll refer back to one of the old chewing gum commercials, four out of five dentists chew dentine. Let's say the 248 dentists that were surveyed actually said that they chewed dentine. How many total were surveyed? What we have here is a situation that's a little bit more specific that we can address that relates to ratios. In the first sentence, we're given two pieces of information that are connected to each other. Four dentists specifically that chew dentine out of a total of five dentists. With our second sentence, we can create another ratio using exactly that same construction. 248 dentists chew dentine, so that number goes on top. The unknown total number surveyed goes on the bottom. And when we have a situation like this, we can cross multiply 4 times x is equal to 5 times 248. And so for these specific types of problems, we have a little bit more direct map of how to work out our answer in order to come up with that final 310 dentists were surveyed. So there are some specific word problems that are directly connected with ratios. Again, since the word problems are a very individualized sort of thing, please make sure that you, when you seek help, specifically tell your instructor or the tutor how you are thinking of things and ask them if they can help you get your thinking into an equation. Do not let them simply take over for you. Don't let them push you from the driver's seat into the passenger seat. Stay in control of your math vehicle. Ask them to help you navigate 